This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So following on from our operating activities, which I hope you're all happy and comfortable with now, we're going to go through and look at our investing activities, which to you and I at this level is buying PPE, selling PPE, and also there might be some interest that we've received or dividends that we've received from investments that we may have made. OK, if you were to take it further out in the real world, uh, cash flows, also to do with investing activities, anything to do with essentially your, your non-current assets. So like I said, at this level, it's PPE, but you could buy and sell intangibles. You could buy and sell investments. Uh, I think you'd be a bit unlucky to get anything on intangibles, investments. The focus is on property, plant and equipment, isn't it? Okay. So the first bit, although I refer to it as investing activities and the disposal of PPE, isn't a cash flow that actually appears within the investing activities section. Okay. Uh, it actually appears within your operating activities because what you've got the is using is it the indirect method uh, of working out your cash from your operations you have to adjust for any non-cash expenses don't we so non-cash expenses being depreciation but a profit or loss on disposal remember that is non-cash isn't it so if you have a loss on disposal, that's a non-cash expense that will need to be added back. If you have a profit on disposal, that's non-cash income, which has pushed up your profits, but hasn't increased your cash. So you will need to deduct it. OK, so do just be careful there. However, likewise as well, uh, when you have, if you like, the proceeds, the proceeds is the cash inflow that you may be required to calculate and the proceeds are the inflow from the disposal of PPE. OK, so you just need to be a bit careful because questions will give you two out of the three things. So it could give you the profit or loss on disposal and the carrying value, in which case you work out the proceeds. If you're given the proceeds, brilliant. That's the cash inflow, isn't it, from the disposal? But you would then need to work out the profit or loss on disposal, wouldn't you? OK, and that goes in your operating activity. So it covers both aspects, doesn't it? It looks at your investing activities with the inflow from the proceeds and the operating activities with the non-cash expense or income. So uh, example number five, really straightforward. Uh, how would this be presented in the statement of cash flows? Is it there for DBA? So it says the DBA dispose of a piece of plant and equipment for 250,000 in the year. So is that your inflow, isn't it? Uh, and then it had a carrying value of 225. So I think there you can see that you've made is it a profit on disposal of the difference, which is, I think, 25,000, isn't it? Uh, question says, how would it be presented? Pardon me. In the statement of cash flows. Well, you would have the, is it your operating activities? Uh, and within there, obviously, you would start off, is it with PBT? I know we don't know the number. Uh, you would have the, is it your interest income? Which you would deduct. You would have the, is it your finance cost? Which you add back. So a little bit of revision as we go along. Uh, your depreciation as an expense, which you add back, isn't it? And then what we have here is your profit on disposal. We sold it for 250. Carrying value was 225. The profit is 25, isn't it? That's non cash income. It's pushed up your profits but doesn't have an impact on the operating cash flows, does it? So therefore, we need to deduct that profit. What you also have as well is further down in your financing activities. Uh, you have the, oh, careful, Christopher, not your financing activities. Slight Freudian slip there. We are looking at your investing 
activities because we've invested in PPE. So you have there, don't you? Your purchase of property, plant and equipment, which is an outflow of 225, isn't it? Okay. No, oh, careful. Oh, I need to wake up early start to the morning today. There we go. Okay, just showing it's easy to make a mistake within the exam. So the purchase of PPE, essentially there is an outflow, isn't it, which is those proceeds. It would probably help if I referred back to the actual question, isn't it? Okay, so there we go. You have your proceeds of 250000 Excellent. Uh, you've then got, is it the acquisition of property, plant and equipment? So instead of selling it, oh, careful, gone too far. Uh, you have the acquisition of PPE. So you are looking at a cash outflow. You are looking there, aren't we, essentially for your cash additions. Okay. Uh, whereby you've credited bank, debited your PPE. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at things from a carrying value perspective. So you have your opening and closing carrying value. So remember, we drive on the left, don't we? We crash on the right. Uh, so you have your opening asset on the debit, the closing on the credit, ready to, to bring forward onto the other side. Uh, you then have adjustments for evaluation, depreciation and disposals. Uh, depreciation and disposals both reduce the carrying value. Again, when you're disposing of your PPE, make sure you remove it from the carrying value of the PPE using the carrying value of the disposed asset. Uh, and then the revaluation in the year whereby you've debited PPE, credited your other comprehensive income. Uh, it goes there, doesn't it, on the debit side as you've increased the value of the asset. Again, the depreciation, if you're interested, uh, that's a non-cash item, isn't it? So you would also need to adjust for that figure within your operating activities, okay? Again, it's tier counts. It's my favourite. Uh, you can do it in any other way that you see fit. I don't care. As long as you get the answer correct. So let's go through, have a look at the example, the acquisition of PPE. Uh, it wants you to work out the cash outflow. For the purchase of property, plant and equipment to appear in the statement of cash flows. So we're going to have to draw up a T account. Again, you've got there your opening figures for 20x4, your closing figures for 20x5. Uh, you've got your evaluation. So just be careful. It was 150 last year. Uh, we have added in, is it 350 to the year? So the revaluation in the year is 350. Cumulatively, we've had revaluation totaling 500. Uh, we've then got depreciation of, is it 850,000? An item of machinery was disposed of for 120, which is the proceeds. But remember, to work out the purchase, we need to adjust for the carrying value, don't we? Nothing else. So what we've got there is if we draw it up with a nice little tier count, we can put it in there, is it with your property, plant and equipment and looking at your carrying value, your opening carrying value that you have is 12,500. Your closing, 13,200, isn't it? Remember, it's an asset, the opening on the debit side and the closing on the credit. Uh, we then had the revaluation. I think that's the hardest bit because remember, it's the revaluation in the year, which is 350. It's not the 500. That's cumulatively. Uh, it was 150 last year, and that 150 is already built into the opening balance, isn't it? Yeah, we want to get it to 500, so there's an increase of 350. So please, 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 please be very careful there. Uh, the depreciation, I think, that we charged in the year was 850. That reduces the carrying value. The disposal that you have is 100, isn't it? And then once you've gone through and done that, you can then balance it all up, can't we? Okay. It should hopefully be bigger on the right. 
Uh, so does that give me, is it 14, 150 right? 14, 150 left. Does that give me, is it 1,300, which is my balancing figure? That's my cash figure, isn't it? And that figure that you have there is an outflow. And that will be your purchase of property plant and equipment. Again, it's an outflow. So when you show it on the statements of cash flows, it will be in brackets, won't it? Okay, there you have it. Uh, if you wanted, I shouldn't show you these things, should I? But anything to make sure that you have different ways and that may help you. You could take your brought forward. Is it there of 12,500? Uh, you could go through there and add on. Is it the revaluation? Is it of 350? You could then go through there and deduct the disposal. Was it of 100? You could deduct, was it the depreciation of 850? Did I put 850 in before? Yes, we did. And then what you've got as well, you can deduct your carry forward figure, which was there, was it as 13,200? OK, that will then go through there and give you your cash figure, which was a negative figure, wasn't it? And if you tap it in on your calculator as one three hundred. There we go. It's up to you, OK, uh, how you work it. Personally, I prefer T accounts. If you don't like T accounts and debits and credits, think about how it increases or decreases the opening balance. OK, yeah, I can see you're all being swayed away from the T accounts. But what can I do? Uh, last little bit that you've got there uh, is going through and looking at is it then your, your interest received? I haven't put in any examples. It's not too exciting. Uh, I think we need to go through there and remove that carry forward figure there. It will be removed within your note. So ignore what I've just said. Uh, interest received again. Uh, it's a receivable, it's an asset, isn't it? So again, you drive on the left, you crash on the right. So you have your opening debit balance. Your closing balance is a credit to be brought forward on the debit side. The only reason why I put it in is in case you're given an opening and closing interest receivable balance, then you need to adjust your interest income from the statement of profit or loss that you have adjusted for within the operating activities. And then your balancing figure there that you have is your interest received. Okay, it's interest received. That is an inflow. Okay, again, if you so wish, you could quite simply just do the brought forward figure plus the figure from the statement of profit or loss, deduct the carry forward will give you your cash figure. It's entirely up to you, okay? If it was to crop up within an objective test question, I think it would be pretty straightforward, okay? Again, if the opening and closing figures are zero, then whatever the interest income figure is will be equal to the cash inflow figure, okay? But if there is an opening and closing interest receivable figure, you need to adjust for the opening and closing to work out that cash figure. OK, there we go. That's everything to do there with. Is it your investing activities? We'll move on to look at financing activities in the next video.